Hey everyone, so I hope you guys enjoyed the chest pain section. We're going to be moving on to abdominal pain. Um, for anybody that's new here, welcome. I hope that these sessions are going to be enlightening and fruitful and you'll be able to see what it is that we do as doctors and, and hopefully get a feel for it as you join us on our on our rounds on the weekend. So uh, abdominal pain inherently is, is much more difficult than chest pain. There's more going on in the abdomen, and I think um, when I was prepping for these cases, I realized chest pain has a lot to do with the, the circulatory system. It's a lot of how do we get blood into and out of the chest, and so a lot of the issues that went on um, with chest pain in general had to do with the circulatory system. Now, abdominal pain is different because it, it involves some circulatory aspects, and uh, but it's much more than that. There is there's metabolic issues, there's GI issues, there's reproductive issues. So really, other than, well, I guess even neurological issues can come up in the abdomen as well. But um, in general, every system is pretty well represented within abdominal pain. So as I was prepping for um, this session, uh, I realized how much of a gargantuan task it might be. And so I've try to come up with the best way uh, that I've found to break all of this information up because it can be overwhelming. And it, as you see here, you know, these are all the different topics we're going to be talking about. And this is just an overview. So my goal for you for abdominal pain is to get the basics, to get, um, get a, an idea of how do you go from determining if a person is sick and needs to be operated on versus they're not so sick and we have a little bit more time to to work um, and figure out what's going on with them. So that's really what the, the main focus over the next few weeks is going to be. Um, it's going to be talking about all the different causes of abdominal pain and we're not going to hit every single one possible. We're going to um, hit probably the most the most common or the most important ones um, and um, talk about little T tips and tricks on how we can go about differentiating um, serious cases versus not so serious cases and um, and having a convention on how we think of abdominal pain. And when I think of it, it really is just about location. So I have it broken up here with the right upper quadrant, right lower, left upper and left lower quadrants. And so if we look at the diagram of the abdomen, it's all based off of different quadrants. So this is the right upper quadrant, this is the right lower, right or left upper, and then left lower. And so things that are housed in each of these quadrants are gonna have different uh, or varying levels of, of pain or symptoms or whatever it is. But as you see here in, in this pretty blown out diagram of the abdomen, everything is around each other. So the liver is around the stomach, the spleen is around the stomach, the kidneys are behind both things, the intestines are everywhere, the pancreas is right there in the middle. And so, um, and then you have your ovaries down here, your uterus um, down there, and so, and then your bladder is here also. And so it, this is all kind of spaced out, but in reality, everything's kind of just smushed together. And, um, and so with abdominal pain, it's helpful to have these quadrants, but know that things kind of bleed into each other. So you can have stomach pain, but feel it on the right upper quadrant versus the epigastric region versus the left upper quadrant. So we're going to go through all that, but I just want you guys to know that if you feel overwhelmed or if you feel lost, um, let me know. We can try to figure out a way to make it more understandable or um, maybe we, we, we would focus our attention on to um, specific disease states. Um, it, this takes a while to learn in general. And so I don't, I don't want to overwhelm you. And this is all for your education. It's not for grades or anything like that. It's just to get, give you a feel of what it's like to, um, to be a doctor to, to round. So, um, having said that, let's go ahead and get started. All right. So first let's just get a general overview of the anatomy of the, of the abdomen. So, the abdomen is basically a compartment in your body that's divided by two planes. The first plane is the diaphragm, which is up here. It's this uh, pinkish color that's right there. And so the diaphragm uh, segments your, abdo your abdominal cavity, which is this right here, from your thoracic cavity up here. And your thoracic cavity, of course, is what we talked about um, not 
this last few weeks, which is um, where your heart and your lungs and your esophagus and all that run through. So the abdomen, so the, the top part of the abdomen is, um, is separated by the diaphragm. The bottom is by the pelvis. So where basically the legs meet the the body that's the lower segment of your abdomen so it goes it spans from your thoracic cavity to um your pelvic cavity and so there's other divisions within the abdomen itself um depending on where organs originated from so you can have things uh, retroperitoneal you can uh, which is kind of this this fascial layer that divides everything in the abdomen but i was thinking about dividing it that way but it just became too complicated so my convention is going to be based off of the quadrants and also what's what's a surgical emergency versus what is not. So when we look at the abdomen here, um, so we said that this over here is your diaphragm. Um, now coming into, if these are our quadrants, this is our right upper quadrant. The things that are important in the right upper quadrant are your liver here, the gallbladder that's kind of housed right here in the middle, this little green thing, um, and your stomach. Those are the things that you typically will feel in your right, right upper quadrant. Um, now, if you have a pregnant lady, um, this little appendix, oops, this appendix right here can actually migrate up as the uterus grows bigger and pushes everything upwards. So um, just know there there's going to be some questions about pregnant women, and we might have a case on uh, with a pregnant lady. So just keep in mind that you know, the, the anatomy is going to be slightly different with someone who is pregnant if they are later on in their trimester. Now, behind the liver, or right below the liver, is your kidney, which is this right here, and on the other side, it's right here. So if you if you feel your back where kind of those ribs end um, and, and um, you start feeling kind of more of your muscles, um, that's around where your kidneys are. And so um, the kidneys are... are much farther back than most of the other organs. They're kind of smushed all the way at the, the back side of your, your, your ribs. And so um, a lot of times you can feel abdominal pain with um, kidney pain, but a lot of times you'll feel it either on the flank here on the sides or in the back itself. Now, behind all that, you have your, your aorta, which is that big gigantic vessel that supplies blood from your heart to the rest of your body. Um, next to the aorta, you're going to have your um, your vena cava, which is the the vein um, the vein um, or I guess equivalent to the aorta that brings all the blood back. Um, and you also have some veins going into the liver, which are your portal veins, and that basically gets um, the nutrients from your stomach, uh, not your stomach, sorry, your intestines, and draws that back to the liver so that your liver can absorb some of those nutrients. Um, now, so we talked about the right upper quadrant, so let's go with the, the left upper quadrant next. And so the left upper quadrant is going to, the, the main things that are important in the left upper quadrant are going to be your stomach over here. Um, you can have um, a stomach pain that causes left upper quadrant pain, but the most important one is the spleen. Now, there's not a ton going up going on in the left upper quadrant, so um if you see somebody with left upper quadrant pain, the two things I want you to think of is the spleen and the the stomach itself. So um, what, well, what can happen with the spleen? Well, the spleen is a very vascular organ. So um, if it gets injured or it gets distended and then it gets injured, it's going to bleed and it's going to bleed like crazy. And whenever blood is introduced into the abdomen, it, can, it basically ir irritates the cavity irritates the peritoneum and that's where your nerve fibers are going to be and so that that is what will cause most of the pain and so that that blood being an irritant and it's spilling into the abdominal cavity um, is what's going to cause you to have most of the pain um, each of these these organs themselves they don't really have nerve endings inside them what is usually innervated is that 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 um that lining of tissue that kind of encapsulates them. And so when things get swollen or when things get inflamed and you, you start to um, expand into that capsule, stretch that capsule, that's when you typically will, will feel the pain. So um, same thing with whenever the spleen gets big, when the liver gets big, 
um, or inflamed. And, and same thing with the kidneys. Like if you have a kidney infection, a lot of times that, that's because the, the inflammation around the kidney. So now behind the stomach, we have the pancreas. And the pancreas, the head of the pancreas kind of sits in this C shape around where the stomach turns into the duodenum and the tail points to the, to the um, spleen. So the stomach and the pancreas, when you have pain, it can cause epigastric pain. And so what's the epigastric region? Well, it's kind of that middle area between the right upper quadrant and then the left upper quadrant. So this area right here is that epigastric region. Um, and so if you have somebody with epigastric pain, a lot of times it's going to be your stomach. It can also be your pancreas. It can technically also be um, gallbladder and liver, but those are more typical for the right upper quadrant. Now, going down to the um, the right lower quadrant, there's not a ton in here. You have your ovaries over here that are always really important to remember because your ovaries can cause a lot of pathology. So anything in the in the lower abdomen in the pelvis area, you should be thinking about reproductive organs like your ovaries or your uterus. Um, but in the in the right lower quadrant, we have our intestines. So we have our colon, we have our appendix, which is that little thing hanging off the the right colon. Um, and you have um, you have muscles back here as well. But if we're talking about organs, really the big one is going to be the colon and the appendix. Now on the right side, you have more colon and you don't have an appendix, um, but you can have things that are similar to like an appendicitis, which is like a diverticulitis. And we'll go through all that. Now in the middle of everything, you have your small intestine, which is a snaking uh, thing that they show in the middle. It's not one little tube like that. It actually goes everywhere but you know, that's gonna be very hard to draw. So, and you would kind of miss out on um, the, the structures underneath. And so um, you also have a bunch of veins and, and arteries um, supplying the colon and the small intestine. And if you look at it, you see the, art, the, the vessel coming down and branching off into these little loopies. And so these loops allow for uh, blood to go all over the place and, and supply the entire colon. And so, and, and small intestine. And so this is important because if you had something like a clot coming down and getting stuck over here, well, that's okay. So if the clot is here and nothing's getting past this, that's okay because blood can come down here and, uh, and supply this entire area from these little branches coming out. So even if you blocked it here, it didn't really matter because you had an, a way for everything to communicate. So the, this uh, vascular structure is super, super important. Um, for for the colon and for the small intestine. And now, um, lastly, down here in the in the low abdomen pelvic area, you have your rectum, um, you have your bladder that kind of sits over here. And then if you're a woman, you have your uterus, which I need to learn how to draw a uterus, and your ovaries on, off to the side. So um, that's the general anatomy of the abdomen. So liver, gallbladder, uh, kidney, you have your adrenal glands on top of the kidneys. I think of them as little hats that the kidneys wear. Um, you have your stomach, you have your spleen, other kidney, you have your pancreas over here. Um, you have your duodenum going to your jejunum, and then um, basically your small intestine. The small intestine turns into the large intestine. You have at the junction between the small and large intestine, you have your appendix. The large intestine comes up, travels across, and then comes back down. The, the large intestine is called the colon. So you have your ascending colon, your transverse colon, and your descending colon. As it makes this little loop over here that's called the sigmoid colon, um, and then as it comes down, this is your rectum. And as, where the rectum connects to the outside world is your anus. So that's the general overview of the anatomy. So let's go over how I'm going to be splitting this up.